Welcome to Just Cook It Radio, where delicious recipes and real cooking lead to amazing dishes. We cook, you listen, it works. With your hosts, Chef Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to Just Cook It on the Just Cook It Radio Network. And you can watch the show at JustCookIt.tv. Hi, I'm Mario Pareca here with Bill Alexander. No, ch- exactly I, I was waiting for a two-hour delay for Just Cook It. <laughs> we don't have any delays. We forge on. <laughs> <laughs> More snow, 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 snow. No matter where you are in the state of Pennsylvania, we got snow. Yeah, it's blanketing us pretty good. Mike Sackley, I was listening to him to give the weather report on my ride in, and nothing real positive to say. I'm like, <laughs> oh, the roads aren't too good either. And you did that game I was just talking about at Browns, but that's me doing that. Oh, really? Like I drive out to McMurray. So it's somehow get out there. Oh, you'll get there. Don't yeah, worry. It's just not going to be pleasant. Dog sleds and <laughs> dog stuff sleds. like that. Yeah. Do you, uh, ha- do you know how to drive a dog sled? I've never done it before. Hey, oh, you, can lo- you can luge. I, lo- <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Skeleton uh, last night on the Olympics, and I'm going, these people are crazy. Oh, they're nuts. They're a quarter of an inch off the ground. And these were the and women. And they're head first. Yeah, and these are the women doing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are nuts. But, they're uh, intense. But anyway, hey, we got to do a new shout out. We got a new we affiliate. Do. Yes, we need to welcome... WVHO, which Hope is... Hope FM. Hope FM, 90, 94.5. That's right. And uh, Nanticoke. Nanticoke. Which is uh, right near Wilkesbury, Wilkes- yes, Wilkes- where I go and do my television appearances on PA Live. So we're glad to have them aboard. I bought a 1973 VW Bug from that area in 2002. So, well, the, the ties are just I mean, deep. it's just they so deep. deep. That's right. So we're glad to have them on. Welcome. We hope you enjoy the show. And you can feel free to call us as well as any of the listeners, even if you're listening to the podcast at 855-590-0590. Again, our number is 855-590-0590. The lines are always open. And um, just to, to give you an update on everything that's going on, we have a special guest that's coming on the show next week. Right. And the book is right there, Bill. She wrote that book. It's called Abraham Lincoln in the Kitchen. So I started reading the book. She sent us a copy. Is this like Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is actually, <laughs> it's interesting, that this is actually a historical account of Abraham Lincoln and his wife from their childhood and it's all about the food they ate, the food they cooked um, and it, it even has recipes in it so we'll be making a recipe from this book next week. And uh, I'll show this camera right here. This is what it looks yep. like. Abraham Lincoln in the Kitchen. And uh, Smithsonian Books published this. And it just, brand new book, just came out. And I, like I said, I started reading it. It's really interesting because there's recipes in here. And what she did was she took recipes from Abraham Lincoln's time and is, is adapted them. Is that why you grew them. the beard this way now? You're shaving <laughs> so you can wear the hat next week? I, I may. Okay, if you I find me a top hat, I'll put okay. it on. But, um, yeah, so it's a really interesting book. There's a lot of great recipes in here. Old style recipes. Corn Dodgers. What is um, a Corn Dodger? Dodger. It's uh, that's what Abraham Lincoln, believe it or not, used to take uh, when he would work on his farm. He would be um, he would take corn dodgers, put them in his pocket, and, bo- and they said he would always have a book. So when he would go uh, take a break, okay. he would eat corn dodgers and read the book. And what a corn dodger is is um, roughly uh, ground cornmeal that you uh, that you boil in water to cook, and then you form it into almost like a uh, almost like think of uh, an ear of corn. Okay. And then you fry it okay. in oil, in lard or oil or fat. Okay. Or Bacon fat, and then uh, it becomes kind of hard on the outside and crispy, and it's called a corn dodger. Similar to a hush puppy. Ka- yeah, yeah, kind okay. of, sort of, except okay. it doesn't have the extra ingredients right. in the batter. But Lincoln's wife was from an a more affluent family, okay. and so she would eat her, the recipes for her from her childhood have wheat flour, eggs, ah. different things like that. Their cornbread, if you compare the cornbread recipes, Abe's was much more toned down okay. um, because he grew up on a farm and they didn't have the, the, the money, money or the affluence that Mary That's kind of cool, actually. So, yeah, it's a really interesting book, and I, like I said, I just started reading it, so hopefully I'll get through it by next week, but I did go through all the recipes, and there's some good-looking recipes in there. Now, I have to I have to say something. I got approached yesterday, and I was at a meeting, um, and I actually had people come up to me yesterday saying that they watched the program on TV, and the people that you wouldn't think of, which I thought was kind of unique, but I have to give a shout-out to Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes, I don't know your name, but I know your wife's name, <laughs> <laughs> and she tells me that she listened every Saturday morning, and I do know this, that uh, when I hosted the program, I'm here a long, long time ago. Um, his mother used to listen to me at night. So I have to give a shout out to Mr. Hughes. Thank you for listening. And if Mr. Hughes, if you want to call in and introduce yourself so that Bill knows your name, feel free, 855 590 But the interesting thing about the connection there is, is that 
His wife is also from Mars, PA, which I think is really okay. unique. Didn't go to Mars High School, wow. but she's from the area from up there. So kind of cool. A lot of people from Mars Very here. Cool. Yes. Well, we we Too finally many. admit to it now. That's all. <laughs> but, uh, but Before I thought, no one but knew I thought, women, I thought women were from Venus. Well, she was from Mars, mm-hmm. anyhow. <laughs> And so that was really um, one other thing I want to mention before we start cooking and it, Bill, this month oh, wait, is, is that what we do here? That's what we do. Oh, okay. we cook, I didn't know that. You listen and it, it works. works. <laughs> so this month is National Hot Breakfast Month. Oh. So we are going to make a couple of my favorite hot breakfast cereals. And um, I posted these pictures throughout the week. Yes. And the recipes are already on our website at justcookit.net. So you can go there and get those and follow along with us as we cook. But I got um, a shout out yesterday on Twitter when I post because it is the year of the Twitter here at Just Cook It Radio. And I posted the picture of the cocoa wheats we're going to make today. Cocoa wheats gave me a shout out and I'm proud to announce we're in talks. Cocoa wheats has agreed to be on the program in the future. So within the next few weeks we should have cocoa wheats on the program and we can talk. It's such a nostalgic food. It is. It is. And that's one of the first things I said to them. I've always, I love cocoa wheats and it just reminds me of being, of going way back and they said, they said there's no nostalgia, no food as nostalgic as cocoa wheats and I believe it. I believe it too. And and the thing is, is that being at um, warm breakfast month because of the weather we've had, it's so appropriate. Oh, absolutely. And breakfast is my favorite meal. Yeah. I mean, whether I eat, I'll eat breakfast any time of the day. Mm-hmm. And whatever, if you want to call it brunch, I, whatever you want to call it, I just, I love breakfast foods, whether it be the cereals, the eggs, or whatever. But today we're going to make a couple hot cereals. And one other announcement before we start to cook. Um, this Monday, at my father, Dr. Joe Pareka, who's been on the show, yeah. is bringing a special guest speaker into Pittsburgh. He's a world-renowned expert on health, wellness, anti-aging, and he's going to be doing a lecture at the Pittsburgh Marriott this okay. Monday um, So at 7 p.m. So if anyone's interested in going, it is free of charge. My father's picked up the tab for everyone because he brought him in, and uh, this guy's really well-known. He's got a show on PBS in Denver, in the Denver, Colorado area, and he travels all over the world. He has a couple books that he's written, so he's going to do a book signing. He's going to talk, again, all about health, wellness, anti-aging. He talks a lot about food, so it kind of fits in the theme here. But right. I just wanted to send that invite out. If anyone's interested, you can go to justcookit.net and fill out, go to the Contact Us page, fill out that form with your information, and then uh, we'll be sure to get back to you and give you all the specifics. Now, are you going to be there on Monday? I'm going to be there, yes. You're going to interview him? I can. Why don't you do that? We can have him call in. We can do that, show. too. My father knows him. So. Yeah, but if he's in Denver, that's really early. Well, he travels all oh, over okay. the place. So. I, I was being I'll nice. talk to him on Monday. We'll, nice ask him. Yeah, absolutely. I'll talk to him on Monday. We'll set something up because the information he has is really interesting. I've seen him speak a couple times. So have you tried to convince him to put you on his PBS show yet? <laughs> Not yet. The show's <laughs> fairly new. It started out as an online program and oh, just really? recently got picked up by PBS. So it's good stuff. It's called The New Health Conversation. And PBS in Pennsylvania, if you'd like to pick us up, we're more than welcome to go. Wherever <laughs> yes. you want us to go, we'll we're, go. We're very light. Yeah. You can just pick us right up. Pick us up. <laughs> NPR, we're willing to go there too. Yeah. Whatever takes. Let us know. Give us a call. And if you're listening somewhere on on the podcast and would like us to be on your radio station, simply reach out to us and we can re- I'll reach out to them together and make something work. Um, we have a lot of listeners, I noticed after Pennsylvania. We have a lot of listeners online in Pennsylvania first right. and then California. And also Texas. And Texas. Which so, is really interesting. Yeah, so if anyone in California or Texas wants to get us on their, pro- on their radio stations. Please let us know. Yeah, we'd love to be on them. So give us a shout out. So let's get cooking really quickly. We'll start and then we'll take our first break and then we'll finish. So the first thing we're going to make is a white chocolate raspberry oatmeal. Ooh, that sounds this good. This is one of my favorites. Now, now, when you think of oatmeal, though, you uh-huh. just think of oatmeal. And, and occasionally, if you want to spice it up a little bit, probably a bad use of words, you use brown sugar cinnamon, and that's it. You can, you but can. there's all kinds of different things uh, you can do with oatmeal. When I eat oatmeal, I, I eat the same thing day in and day out. Yeah. And well, you that's can, boring. <laughs> I just realized that. Well, and you can, uh, you can make cookies with oatmeal when you think yes. about it, breads with oatmeal. Um, you can use oatmeal as a thickening agent in different sauces and soups and different things. So, I mean, oatmeal is such a con- or not controversial. It's a um, very flexible food okay. that you can use, and you can use it in all different types of ways. And I love the combination of raspberries and white chocolate. I'm not a white chocolate fan by I any like stretch. I'm just not a fan. But when you put there's something about a raspberry with white chocolate, the sweetness and tartness of the raspberry with the sweetness of the white chocolate okay. that just marries well. So the first thing we're going to do here, and a lot of people I know, you can make this with water if you like, and okay. a lot of people want to do that. Can you make it in the microwave? Can you check our Sure, I'll check source? it. Um, yes, you can. Make, well, you can make it in the microwave if you're going to use water. But um, what I'm going to start with is some half and half. So we've got a cup of half and half here. Okay. We're going to pour that right into our pot, and we're going to have to check our electricity. Oh, we're having an issue. I will back but away. We'll so if you're wondering where <laughs> I'm going. He's still here. Don't worry. 
We're just gonna make sure we got power so we can actually cook. You got it now? So we're gonna start with our half and half. <laughs> and uh, what we're gonna do is, let me run you through it really quickly because then we're gonna have to take our first break and while we're on break, we'll get this fixed. We'll start with our half and half in the pan and we're gonna bring it up to a boil. Now I like to use quick oats for this just because it, they, they cook faster. Um, you can use the regular oats if you want. They're gonna take a little longer to cook and in that case, I would recommend using water as opposed to, um, ah, there we go. Bill has it fixed. All right. So we got our half and half coming up now. It's getting warm. And we're gonna put it on about medium low just to get it up to, uh, to a simmer because you don't want to scorch it. And the good thing about half and half um, is it, any cream, half and half, you can cook it and reduce it and it won't break. Okay. Now, my question, you said you're using quick oats. Yes. Why? Um, they're fa they cook faster, and I find that, you know, with milk, it's uh, I just like to use um, quick oats with milk. And I don't like to be, you know, these recipes, number one, we only have a certain amount of time on the radio. Right. And number two, I don't like to wait really long for my, okay. for my oatmeal. Because what's the difference between well, quick oats, rolled oats, and steel okay. cut oats. Well, it's the way that the oat is processed. Now, oats, they have a bran on the outside. They have germ on the outside. So okay. it's all about how it's broken down. Now, these are ro these are rolled oats that I have here. And you can see, I'll show them to the camera. They're a little, f they look flat because what they do is they'll take these to process them. They'll um, they'll take that outer layer off, the okay. germ and the bran, and discard that. And then they take the actual oats and they put it under flat, really heavy um plates or stones or whatever right. and flatten them. And then they take those flattened oats and they they toast them. Okay. And then they take those. Now, if they're quick oats, they'll steam them or they'll process them in a way where they're already part cooked. Okay. So that way they cook a lot faster. I got you. Uh, roll, now, steel cut oats, they don't flatten them. They leave them in there after they remove the germ and the, the bran. They don't okay. remove as much so there's a little more uh, nutritional value in steel cut oats. But then they just take them and they cut them with a steel blade. So okay. they cut them into smaller pieces. So they're they're not flattened. That's why they have that round shape. And these oats here, these quick oats, these flat oats, they have this flat shape. As you can see, I'll put one in my hand. Yeah. Kind of put it up there. You can see that it's flat. Okay. Okay. And these are organic. You can get organic oats right. at the local supermarket. And I really like them. And I even, here's something else I like to do with oatmeal. Not what we're going to do today, but I like to take this as like a, a snack or a dessert even. Okay. Uncooked. Put some honey on it, some heavy cream, some um, berries, and like some almonds or walnuts. Yeah. It's a fantastic snack. I've seen other people do that before, that it, and it does. It seems interesting. Yeah, it's one. that's one of my favorites. And it's really not bad for you. Really? So, yeah. So, we got our we got half heat. and half coming up. Yes, we do. We got it's heat. getting warm in here. Well, why don't we take our first break okay. while you get through that? So, we're going to let our half and half warm up, and we're going to step away for just a minute and pay some bills. And uh, when we come right back, we're going to finish this and get into our cocoa. Eats. And you are listening to Just Cook It on the Just Cook It Radio Network. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil Giannetti a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com. Good to have you back. You're listening to Just Cook It on the Just Cook It Radio Network. And you can watch the program if you want to watch us actually make these dishes at justcookit.tv. I am Mario Pareca here with Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley. And bubbling half and half. We've got it coming up. So what there I'm going to go. do now is I'm going to add a pinch of sea salt. This is the fine sea salt. Okay. okay? And that's going to kind of season it up a little bit and just make the flavors pop. You don't want to taste salt, but salt will help draw out more of the flavors from the other foods. And we're going to add our oats now. Okay. okay. We're going to stir them in. And now, when, whenever you're cooking oats, okay, the best way to do it is to refer to the directions on the box because right, they're yeah. all different. So whether you're using five and a half minute, two and a half minutes, standard oats, quick oats, whatever it is, these are quick oats. These take about two to three minutes, two to four minutes to cook. So we're just going to keep an eye on them and keep stirring them. And when they reach that consistency, when they thicken and reach the consistency we're looking for, then we can pull so it So in other words, right now what you ju just did is you made the oatmeal as the, the, oatmeal is the way it says in the back of the box. Basically. 
basically. Yeah, but the I only thing you the, half and half instead of milk or right, water. Okay. Right. I use the half and half. That'll make it a little richer. And then uh, we're going to start putting the flavor into it after the uh, oat milk. Gotcha. Bowls. Okay. So I mean that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. As Mike Sackley sits and eats his yo play. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. He's oh. an addict now. <laughs> I. It's so. Oh, I don't want to get into it. Hey, it's there, so good. There could be worse things. Yes. It's good. It's tasty. It is. It's good stuff. And we're still waiting. We have. Uh, we sent our questions to Yo Play. Okay. I and they re- they received them, and uh, they should be back this week. So next week on the program, we can, um, or maybe the following week, since we have a guest next week, we can read those answers and, and, and we'll publish them on the website. And we've well. gotten response for the Ask Mario segment. Not yet. Okay. What would Mario do? Or what would Mario do? So yeah. if you want to call in anyone, <laughs> give us some scenarios and some scenarios. What would Mario do? Ask me whether it's cooking, in the kitchen. I think we need the light. bracelets. Is what it is. Whatever. We we're getting, to, yeah. we're gonna get those. We're gonna yeah. get that. But our uh, our oatmeal's cooking. You can see it's starting to thicken. Okay. And it's looking good. Are you a fan of oatmeal? I love oatmeal. I do too. What about you, Mike? Oh yeah. Nice. It's good for a day like this. What's that? It's good for a day like this. Oh yeah. Definitely. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Especially when it's when it's cold out. The weather outside is frightful. And uh, so we're just gonna keep stirring. It's coming up. I never thought I'd be on the radio watching a, a yeah, pot we're of watching oatmeal, oatmeal cook. <laughs> How much fun is this, guys? <laughs> and if you want to call in and talk to us while our oatmeal cooks, the yeah. number is 855-590-0590. Again, 855-590-0590. I miss my life coming in this morning to watch oatmeal boil. I mean. <laughs> no better way post-Valentine's than to watch uh, some oatmeal. Right? That's exactly that's right. right. A lot of people are, uh, this is, and you know what? Speaking of post-Valentine's, this is actually pretty good hangover food. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at this real quick. Uh, oatmeal facts. Some, I need that. More than yeah, most. a little bit of oatmeal stuff. Um, so, steel cut oats, as we said, are the whole grain oats, the inner portion of the oat kernel, which have been cut into pieces. They're commonly used in Scotland and Ireland to make porridge, whereas rolled oats are used in England and other English speaking countries, i.e., the U.S. Thank you, Bill. And the rolled oats are traditionally, um, they're oat groats. They've been dehusked, steamed, and rolled into flat flakes under heavy rollers, as we said, yeah. before being stabilized by, by being lightly toasted. So, um... Yeah, so that's that's what we're using today, and that's what you'll see most um, most of the time when you go to uh, to the supermarket. Now, here's a tip for oatmeal. Okay. Just oatmeal in general. Um, one thing I learned, especially if you're making it for a bunch of people. Now, this is just one serving here, but if you're going to make more, it's always better to leave it on the runny side. Yes. Because it will thicken, thicken as it up. Sits. Yeah, I've learned that the hard way. Yeah. And there's times I've made oatmeal so, that, that looks like wallpaper paste when it's done. <laughs> so well, that's that's not what we want. Yeah, but no. When we made it at the when we used to make it at the restaurant, we used to make it in large amounts, and we put it in what we call a bain marie. And what a bain marie is is a stainless steel vessel for holding like sauces. So it's tall and kind of. I can go into the Duquesne Club and getting oatmeal. Oh yeah, absolutely. We Wealthy people oatmeal. eat oatmeal. Yeah, we have okay. oatmeal. Everyone eats oatmeal. They have. We'd, have, <laughs> we'd make steel cut oatmeal. We'd make traditional oatmeal. But so we'd make a big batch, put it in a bain marie, and put it in the steam table to keep it warm. So we were always told to make it runny. So it was almost like a soup when it went in there. Right. But then when you'd serve it, it would be perfect. Firmed up, yeah. Yeah. So right now we have a uh, caller in line. Let's say hi to Kevin in Masontown. Kevin, how are you doing this morning? Hey, I'm doing great. Nice to talk to you guys. Nice to hear from nice you. I just wanted on, to say, you know, you talk about oatmeal. There's nothing better on a blistery cold or blustery cold morning like this to have a bowl of oatmeal. Oh, definitely. Or cream of wheat. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Or I couldn't agree with you more. Or even grits. Oh, I, love oh, I like grits. grits. I haven't yep. thought about that. Yeah. Uh, I like breaking a little cheese up in my grits, too. Oh, I do, oh, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're on the same page. Yes, I absolutely. Just, you know, I just wanted to call in because I enjoy listening to you guys. Um, and I, I want to say... Um, you were talking about using half and half. Yes. Um, do you use canned milk? You can. Um, it's it's a little trickier. Canned milk's traditionally a little, uh, could be a little thicker, but you can. Yeah, you can use it's canned milk. It's a little milk. sweeter and a little thicker. Right, right. Um, I've found when I've tried to cook with canned milk that I have to, like, thin it out just a tad. Yeah, yeah, you can, you, uh, would, would you use water to thin it out? Oh, yeah, just, just yeah. A, a splash. Yeah, you can. I mean, there's but, nothing um, wrong with yeah, that. You I mean, you know, I've never actually cooked with half and half. Yeah. Uh, but I have used the canned milk, and uh first couple times I tried, it, it, it was too sweet, too thick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I started cutting it a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's... I, I guess that's because it is 
quote unquote concentrated. Right. That's, yeah, it is. It's concentrated and it gets sweeter. Milk is a very high sugar food. So when you concentrate it down like that and you can it, that sugar is going to be more pronounced. Oh, yes. Um, yes. So yes, definitely. You can use canned milk. But the trick is, like you said, you're going to have to thin it out. You're going to have to water it down a little bit, which is a little extra work. Um, but you can use that. You can use whole milk. You can use that. Basically, you can use pretty much any liquid you want to make oatmeal, um, as I, long as I you follow that, the follow it, the It's directions. better off with uh, a milk product. Oh yeah, I rather prefer than milk just product. plain water. Yeah, I mean it's creamier, it's richer, it's got a better mouthfeel to it. I prefer that, that that extra fat gives it that that extra flavor it carries. So I, you know, I prefer whole milk half and half um, heavy cream's a little too much for me I no, find no, it's a little that, too rich that's way too much for me yeah so I, I have, have tried using that in recipes and you know what that's just too too much well there's cer- there's certain things I like to use heavy cream for just oatmeal isn't one of them hmm no. I mean, no, I will right. pour it over my finished oatmeal after it's done. Oh, really? If I cook it with water. Oh, okay. And then put it in a bowl, I'll pour some heavy cream over it to just, you know. Oh, I can yes, see doing that. Yeah. yeah, to, f- no, to richen it and fortify hey, it and um, mount it almost. I just, I like getting opinions and getting ideas from all of you people on the cooking shows. Well, great. That's what we're here for. Because I cook every day. Yeah. And That's awesome. I, you know, I've learned over the last couple of years when I've had to cook, now I'm learning to get better at it, but it's people like you that help me. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Kevin. Anytime you need anything, just give us a call. We're here to help. Oh, hey, thank you. Hey, I'm sitting here right now with a cold one in front of me, and my buddy Weebo's sitting beside me. We're having a nice morning listening to the radio. Well, thank you. Fantastic. I appreciate that. All thank right. You. Hey, listen, you guys have a great day. All right, you Thanks too. for your time. Thank Absolutely. You. Thanks for calling, and thanks for listening. Thank oh, you. no problem, buddy. Thank you. Bye. Mike, that was that a was breath. quick. Yep. <laughs> well, I, did, I did appreciate the fact that he has a cold one there. Yes. Yeah. Well, he didn't say cold what though. Mm. Ah, uh-huh. he didn't know that. You always uh, question. So question for you. Before you ask, I'm yeah. going to add. Or I have some white chocolate here that I shaved. Oh, okay. I used a box grater okay. and I grated it just like you would a cheese. A knuckle buster, yeah. Yeah, and you can see that there. But I'm going to show the camera too our oatmeal. What it looks like now that it's cooked. Yeah. It's creamy. It's delicious. So looks I'm going like to just oatmeal. add. And while it's still hot, I'm going to add our white chocolate. And the reason I shaved it is so it melts easier. Right. Okay. And it goes in there evenly. But go ahead, ask now, a question. Now the, the thing I've noticed, and we've, and in my household, uh, we've noticed it. The price of milk is rising. Uh-huh. And it's rising drastically. And having a 13-year-old that feels that it, uh, no pun intended, grows on trees. Um, <laughs> Did you explain to him? Yeah, that milk that? doesn't okay. come from trees. Just checking. I mean, a gallon of milk costs more than a gallon of gas. There's a problem here. Anyway, um, what about using powdered milk? I mean, you could. I mean, thinking about it, because you're making oatmeal, using the water, you could use the powder and mix it up first and then uh, use that because powdered milk was one of those things that uh, was used during, um, what, the Depression and World War II and stuff like that to um, help save families money. You could. I don't generally keep powdered milk on hand. I don't so either. It's something and I, I play with. But. My grandmother used to have it when we were kids. Uh-huh. And occasionally you would drink it. It tasted worse than skim milk, but I like skim milk now, so. Uh, I don't mind I don't skim know. milk. I mean, yeah, I you could. Milk. I mean, personally, whenever I use milk, milk, milk for anything, I use whole milk. Whole, whole milk. Just because, you know, whether it's – people think skim milk so much better for you. It's really not that much better for right. you. There's still, you know, there's still sugar in it. There's still fat, some fat, a little bit of fat, even though it says there's none. There's still a little bit because right. it's milk. Um, so I just – I typically just bite the bullet and use whole milk because it tastes better. What's, but, really, um, what's really bad is I can't drink whole milk anymore. Wow. Too because rich for I've you. been drinking two percent and skim milk for the last twenty years, mm-hmm. that it's too rich for me now, and I cannot drink whole milk without making a face. <laughs> the, bitter, the bitter milk face. Yeah, it's like okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna plate these up now, and I'm just gonna go rough here. I'm not gonna make them look all pretty or anything because Aww. you know it's radio. And- so what we're gonna do, and this one's, I'm just gonna have a taste. Um, I'm gonna finish this now. And I would serve this in a bowl. And you can always add a little more cream or half and half to okay. thin it down if you like. I'm going to add some slivered almonds to the top of this with our raspberries. I put, I folded some raspberries into the warm oatmeal, okay, okay. after the chocolate melted. Right. And then just uh, about half of what the recipe calls for. And then I, I like to put some fresh ones on top. Right. You don't have to. You can do it however you want. You can put them all in. You can just put them all on top, whatever. Don't, you know, don't let me tell you how to live your life. So, and then we put our almonds on. And I like to finish this, okay, 
with some more shaved white chocolate what I think right really over the top. Mike, and you can't really see the detail he's doing in over here. But he, what he does is you can tell he was a chef at a restaurant because he plates everything up as it is a presentation. Mm -hmm. Like you and I, if we'd make it, we'd just throw everything on top it's of like, it and just eat it. It's like schlop. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty much schlop right here. <laughs> but again, it looks attractive to eat. I would have taken a handful of the almonds, threw it on top. Mm -hmm. So taking the we raspberries. Have. I'll show you the camera really quickly just so they can see. This is just, like I said, I just threw this together. This isn't anything uh -huh. special. Yeah. Here, Mike. Sure. Dig right. in. Yeah. And that's how easy that is. So this is, is literally easy. a three, two, three step process, adding extra flavor. Um, it's rich, it's creamy. It's delicious. It's got that sweetness in it from the white chocolate, which pairs well with the raspberries, and it's got that little bit of acidity from the raspberries. I love raspberries, by the way. But you can use other berries. You can use other ingredients. You know, you don't have to do it exactly like this, but the process is always about the same. That is very good. Yeah, thank you. So. That's that. That's our first and dish. And the thing is, it's different. Um, you still it still tastes like oatmeal. Mm -hmm. It's just different. It's because it is oatmeal. <laughs> but, well, I know, but yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, it is. It's got a little extra, a little extra layer to it. And with so the raspberries, like? and I would have never yeah. thought about putting raspberries in oatmeal before. Oh yeah, I love raspberries. Raspberries, you can, like I said, you can use anything you want. Now this next recipe is really interesting. Okay, I came up with this, and it's one of my favorites. So, and the inspiration, I guess, behind this is, number one, I love cocoa wheats. Right. Grew up on them, love them. My whole family um, has a thing for cocoa wheats. And I like re I like peanut butter cups. Are they organic? No, they're not. Okay. They're regular cocoa wheats. Okay. You can't mess with a good thing like the cocoa wheats, you know, like the, nost the nostalgia of cocoa wheats. Um, so basically the cocoa wheats are, if you've ever had cream of wheat, which yes. is farina. I like, like cream of wheat, too. Which is a semolina. Um, it's processed down into these really fine uh, particles. And... Uh, Granules, I should say, not particles. Um, and they add cocoa to it and some other flavorings. Right. And voila, they you have cocoa wheats. So what we're going to do, and cocoa wheats cook really quickly, by the way. So I, I enjoy that. The first step I, we're going to do is I have a banana here. See? Real banana. I see a banana. Okay. A banana. And I'm going to hack, cut them in half. You're going to hack the banana in hack half. Hack them in half. He's using, the use, he's using the cooking terms. I'm using the layman terms. <laughs> you can use a machete if you like. <laughs> a sword, a samurai sword is my preference. Um, Did really. you see, there's a new cookbook out from the, I guess it's the New Jersey Housewives. Uh -huh. And it's called How to Use a, How to Use a, um, a Meat Cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I saw it the other day online. I'm going, okay, that looks like an entertaining uh, cookbook. So I'm just going to rough dice this banana to okay. about a small dice. Okay, just a half of a banana. And again, this is what I would do for one serving. And we're all, we're all sharing here just because we're really not going to... And we're on the radio. Yeah. And uh, TV. So if you like to watch us on so, TV, go to justcookit.tv or in the area that we're in, uh, check us out on uh, Fayette TV Channel 77 on Sundays after the House to Home Show from the Herald Standard and on Tuesdays after the House at Home Show on the Herald yeah. Standard. So we're, uh, what, Sundays at uh, around 1230 mm -hmm. and Tuesdays around 830. Yes. Right after after our friends at the Herald Standard. That's right. So we're gonna, I've got some butter I put in the pan, okay? Just about a half a tablespoon. We're gonna melt that down. Okay. Okay, we're gonna let that melt. Now I got it on about medium, medium low heat. And we're going to add our diced banana now to this butter. Now we're going to start cooking our banana somewhat. We're not going to caramelize it. We don't want to get a lot of color. We just want to um, soften it a little more than it already is and get it warm because bananas break down really easy. So we don't want it to be, you know, I don't want it to be like a mush so you don't know there's banana in it, but I want it to be soft enough that it all kind of blends together. Now you know? instead of using bananas, can you use plantains? No. Okay. Um, not for this recipe. Plant Plantains. I mean, I guess you could, but it would be, uh, you could, but it'd be more work. It'd be, you'd ha you'd, you need to know how to work with plantains. Because I always heard that when you, instead of you cooking with bananas because they get mushy, yeah. you use plantains right. instead. But, okay, plantains are a little starchier. Okay. They're not as sweet. Okay. Um, this recipe, I don't mind the mushiness. I kind of want the mushiness. Okay. okay. I don't want it to be like a puree, but I want a little mush is okay uh, because we're putting, we're making a hot cereal, mm. you know, so it's all going to be about the same um, texture, texture there. And we're going to have some, uh, you can hear it start to, starting to cook. We're going to use some, um, some walnuts for this one to give it a little crunch and give it a little extra texture on Love top of that walnuts. creaminess. So what we're going to do now is, like I said, this is only going to take about 
two minutes, two to three minutes here, just to get our banana going, get some of this. It's gonna bring some of the sugars out, okay? The butter is gonna give it a little richness, and we don't have a lot of butter, so it's not gonna be greasy. Um, the sugars are gonna start to come out of the banana. It's gonna start to get soft, and uh, it's gonna get really sweet and delicious. And this is a good technique, too. If your bananas at home, say you buy them, and they're just, you, you need to have this. It's one of those recipes that you crave, and they're just not quite ripe. Right. This is a good way to get that sweetness out and sweeten them up. Before we go to break, the one question I have for you, when you eat your bananas, are they green or are they yellow with black spots on them? Yellow with black spots okay. on them. I like them sweet. That's okay. Because that's when all the sugars start to right. break down, and that's when they right. start getting And that's why you make banana bread with the dark black the bananas. The black ba yep. bananas that people, some people I know say they're rotten. No, they're no not, rotten. not at all. That's the best type. They're time. perfect for banana bread. Right. Cookies, cakes. And I love bananas. It's one of my favorite. And even banana yogurt. Oh, Yo play banana yogurt. So now our bananas are about there. You can see, see how they're not, they're still diced. Yeah. But they're, and we can see that on the camera, right? Yeah. Okay. They're not diced, or they're still diced, you can see them, but they're just starting to come apart. So now what I'm going to add to this, here's, here's something. Forgive me, Bill, but believe me, you'll like this. Coconut milk. <laughs> okay. It comes in a can. Yeah. You buy it and uh, you open it. Up. It looks it like up. sour cream. And the coconut milk, see, the cool thing about coconut milk is now there's a difference between the new fad these days is coconut water. Okay. Right. And what coconut water is, and if you go to the island, you can get this. And I'm also going to add a half a cup of water to this to thin it out because, as you, Bill just pointed out, it is thick. And it's almost like when Kevin called in that canned milk. Okay. Because it is because it's come from a can. But coconut water, okay is the stuff from the center of the coconut. So if you go to like the islands, they'll actually give you a whole coconut and still in the green right. case, and they'll puncture a hole in the middle, put a straw in it, and you can drink the water out of the center. And they even sell that in cartons here now. Very high in electrolytes, very good for you. Coconut and milk, on the other hand, is they take the flesh, which is the white inner part of the coconut, and the water, and cook it down and puree it, and then put it in a can. So when you open your can of coconut milk, it's gonna have a real thick layer on top, and that water is gonna sink to the bottom, much like milk does, fresh milk does when the cream rises right to the top. top. So what you want to do is you open the can, take a spoon, and mix it all up so it becomes creamy and delicious. Now this was cold because once you open it, you have to refrigerate right. it. And that's why it looked a little thicker. So and as you can see now, and I added half of a cup of coconut milk and half a cup of water. And you can see it's about the right consistency. So we're going to bring this to a boil and we're going to go to break while this comes up. And uh, once it comes to a boil, we'll add our cocoa wheats. And we'll add a couple mystery fun ingredients I'm going to show you here in a minute. <laughs> Looks so, good. Um, don't touch that radio dial. We're going to finish our cocoa eats in just a few minutes. And you're uh, watching Just Cook It on JustCookIt.tv. And you're listening to Just Cook It Radio on the Just Cook It Radio Network. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil G&A Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil Giannetti's a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com. Happy music for a Saturday morning <laughs> as we both dance along. <laughs> Welcome I hear it back. every week. It's like you think we get used to it. You are listening to Just Cook It on the Just Cook It Radio Network, and you can watch the show at justcookit.tv. I am Mario Pareca. I was dancing along here with Bill Alexander, and Mike Sackley was staring at us oddly across even, the desk. Who are you guys? Even if the <laughs> weather, we did not have a delay this morning, so we made it here on time. There is no was, delay. We're serious about it. I was this. waiting for the station to operate on delay. Uh, you know what? You know, Brian I, wouldn't go for that. <laughs> when I used to work here in my early days, that was the one thing you hated whenever you knew it was going to snow, and mm -hmm. you had to come in in the morning and open the place up at, what, 4, 4.30? Oh, yeah. But I I also worked here the days when the station was off the air at midnight. We signed off. Oh, my. And then we came back on again, yeah. But knowing you're coming in to eat, that well, has to, it, that has to give some easier. incentive to be yeah. here. I love Saturdays because so, of the show. Yeah, oh, I'm sure, yeah. yeah yes. You we, volunteered for the show yeah. now, right? <laughs> yeah. We are making my... 
pe- my peanut butter banana I cocoa you were say, I thought you were going to say pina coladas for a minute. Ooh, well, I was kind of worried. Don't there. get Mike excited. So <laughs> our coconut milk and water is now boiling, and we're going to add our cocoa wheats to that and okay. mix her up. And you're going to see it start to thicken. And again, read the directions on the box, but cocoa wheats generally take about a minute. So basically what you're doing is, is with the uh, coconut milk, you're using that instead of using water, using milk to make the cocoa wheat. Right. There's still some water in here, like I said, just a, right, just out, a tad bit. But still. It gives it, I just find the flavor of coconut, chocolate, peanut butter, okay. just perfect. I mean, it's like a candy bar right, and a cereal. Because right now, with what's in there, and I can just imagine what it tastes like, it tastes like, um, if you throw a little bit of marshmallow and you'd have a smoothie oh, there cup. You go. Smoothie cup from uh, Broyers that's made in Altoona at PA. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they make well, if you think of the, about the chocolate, you bite into it and you get the marshmallow with yes. the coconut. Love and, that. And I'm thinking that's basically what you're doing here until you add the peanut butter. Right. And Altoona is on the way to our new uh, our new friends yes, and our is. new listeners in uh, in Nancy Cook. So again, I want to welcome Hope FM to the program. Ninety four point five. Yes. W V H O. Yes. Hope Radio. So we have our cocoa wheats just about ready. As you can see, they do go really fast. And what we're gonna add to this. I have some of this special dark cocoa powder, Hershey's. Wow. <laughs> that we're gonna add to give it a little extra chocolatiness. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> are you scared of this pillar? No, I love dark surprised? chocolate. I'm thinking I'm thinking of Hershey because they got slammed with snow this week too. Oh, and yeah. they were making comments on the news that it was uh, no more uh, chocolate there. It was all white chocolate with the way the <laughs> snow fell. Um, but that's what I was laughing about when you showed me the can. So, our cocoa wheats are just there. Okay. They're thick. Now, again, I pull it off a little thinner because we're going to add some stuff. And here's the key, the key to this. Yeah. Now, you can go to health food stores and get this, but it's really awesome stuff. This is powdered peanut butter. Powdered okay? peanut butter? Yeah, so it's peanut butter. Okay. And they, they powder, and it's much better for you, believe it or not. How do you spread it on There's the bread? A, you mix it with... You can mix it with water. Okay. And, yeah, so let's see here. If it, The great thing about this is, I'm trying to find, the, to read you the ingredients, because I'm pretty sure the ingredient it's is, peanuts. here we go. Well, it's got some coconut sugar in it okay. as well. But coconut sugar is produced as from the sap of the coconut palm flower and does not taste like coconut. It is sustainably harvested and low glycemic, containing trace vitamins and minerals. So... There you have it. Okay. So it's all good for you. It's gluten-free, 100% natural, USDA organic. Just add water. Only 1.5 grams of fat per serving. It is 90% less fat than traditional peanut butter, and the flavor is absolutely wonderful. I want you to take a spoon, and I want you to taste just some of this powder. Okay. Okay? Before we add it to our... You can smell it. And they even make oh, wow. they even make a chocolate variety of that, okay. a chocolate powdered peanut butter, and it's great for anything. It's great for smoothies. It's great for shakes. It's great for um, cereals. You know, it's great to top on ice cream. Absolutely, I mean, you can mix it with uh, with water, and it, it'll get that peanut butter consistency depending on how much water you add to it. So it's healthier. How does the powder taste? <laughs> you probably need a drink because it's sucking sucking all the moisture up. So what we're going to do is... <laughs> is you knew I was going to do that. <laughs> it's almost like the cinnamon challenge, but with peanut butter. But it's better. A, it's actually very good. <laughs> so think, we're gonna have add. you seen the commercial for the new movie, uh, Peabody and Sherman? And Mr. Peabody takes the spoon of peanut butter and, <laughs> and licks it. He's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it off the roof of my head. It is good. I understand what you're saying. Yep. It tastes like peanut butter. Let me see the that. It's peanut butter. Yeah. Here you go. It's called, oh. the brand is Just Great Stuff. That's what it's called. And then we're going to add some of our dark chocolate to it. We now need, this. We need to talk to Betty Lou because it's uh, Betty Lou's Just Great Stuff. Okay. I mean, that's good. So again, when we're cooking, now if I'm baking, I'm going <laughs> to measure this out perfectly. Right. But when we cook like this, just, you know, you can add some, taste it, add some, taste it, add some, right. taste it. until you get it to where you want it to be. I'm going to add a little pinch of salt. Salt. Okay. And then we're just going to fold all this together. So we've got our banana, our cocoa wheat. So we put some extra chocolate in there. And we got some powdered peanut butter that we're going to fold in. Smells good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and we're going to plate some up. And just make sure you mix it until all the powder is incorporated. Yeah. Which is right now. And it's got a little bit of a darker color to it because, because of that extra chocolate, chocolate yeah. which I like. 
And let me find my plates, which are right here. I'm going to show you how to plate this up, and then you guys can go ahead and eat this. Again, you and I would just put it in a bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Presentation, what is that? Just eat it out of the pot. Just, exactly. Okay. I'm so very low maintenance here. <laughs> As long as it's edible, Mike's game. Mm -hmm. It takes too long with the chef. I mean, jeez. <laughs> I'm going to take some extra banana here. I told, you, I told you yesterday I'm at this meeting and I have my t-shirt on. And someone says, are you a chef? I said, no, I'm the idiot that works with them. I'm, I'm, the, idiot. <laughs> I'm the idiot that works with the idiot. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take some of our chocolate. I'm the one that has no clue what's going on. That's why I'm here. Um, <laughs> okay. Half the time, I don't know what's going on either, so going to add our cocoa wheat star plate. It looks like frosting. Oh my. Is exactly what it looks Only like. Only we had some cake. I, would that not be a great? And I'm going to add peanut butter. Some regular peanut butter to the top of it just to give it a little extra now creaminess. That, that tastes normal like peanut This butter. is normal peanut okay. butter. This is organic, but it's normal peanut butter. Okay. Just a little dollop on top. Okay. <laughs> And this gives a little color, too. That's really now, the main reason. Okay, I'm going to ask you this, because we've talked about this one before. Mm -hmm. What about using Nutella? You can, absolutely. Can you? Yeah. Okay. And like I said, they make a powdered peanut butter with chocolate. Do they really? Yes. Is so it a can, hazelnut, um, or is it... It's chocolate peanut butter. So I'll you can dark. take it, and you can add that to it as well, if you'd like. And well, I'm going to add some bananas to the top of this. And what, uh, to finish it off... Yep. Got some chopped walnuts. <laughs> Too much? No, I think it's perfectly like... fine. I really do. I think it's kind of neat. I would have never thought about doing this with cream or with no. uh, cocoa wheats. Absolutely, cocoa wheats can be dressed up. <laughs> You can dress I mean, them up, I, and you can take them out all at the yeah, same absolutely. time. I mean, I like cocoa wheat just as is, but this, this adds a different dimension to it. Makes them a little different. Like I said, I think peanut butter cup, chocolate, just flavors that go together. Coconut. Now, you're not going to taste much of the coconut, if any at all. It's just going to make it a little richer. and it's Oh, those are good. Thank you. And it's dairy-free. With... Okay. So that's another reason why I use coconut. Co now, here's an idea, too. You want to make your white chocolate raspberry oatmeal dairy-free? Use coconut milk. Um, that one, you will taste a little bit more of the coconut than you will. The chocolate kind of overpowers right. it in the cocoa wheats. Um, but um, in the oatmeal, good. you'll taste a little a little bit of it. Not much, though. Not enough to say, oh, I'm eating a coconut mm -hmm. or anything like that. So No, that is really good. I would have never thought of this. It's good. It's good. This, you add, a little, you like it? add a little fireball and I'm game. <laughs> Candy for breakfast. <laughs> and that's how we celebrate Hot Breakfast Month here on Just Cook It Radio. So if you want the recipes, again, you can get them at our website at justcookit.net, along with uh, the, the audio to this, the recording, if you want to listen again, and the video at justcookit.tv, if you want to watch us actually make the uh, the white chocolate raspberry oatmeal and the uh, peanut butter chocolate cocoa wheats. And watch me uh, eat powdered uh, peanut butter and get it stuck to the roof of my mouth. <laughs> do the peanut butter <laughs> challenge. Maybe we'll make Mike do that next week. We'll make him do the peanut butter challenge with a tablespoon of peanut butter. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> but, um, well, it's only fair. So I want to thank you for listening, and I want to thank and welcome our new listeners at Hope FM. It's great to have you on board. And um, next week, we will have the author of Abraham Lincoln in the Kitchen on the show. We'll be making a recipe from the book Abraham Lincoln in the Kitchen. So it'll be something that Honest Abe enjoyed, either as a child or as an adult, or cooked himself. Right. Which should be a lot of fun. So we're going to be you have to dress like you're in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> at the top Hat. That's right. Nice. Top hats. That oh, whole man. thing. Especially Mike. I want him dressed up. <laughs> dressed up like a, at like 4 a.m. Well, hey, that. why not? Absolutely. Why not? So, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Again, check us out at justcookit.net. Get all the information there. Follow us on Twitter for a bunch of exclusive information. If you were following me, you would know yesterday. You would see the whole conversation I had with Coco Eats and uh, inviting <laughs> them on, which is always fun. So, follow us on Twitter. Check us out again, justcookit.net. Any final words, gentlemen? No. Have a great week and uh, try to keep warm. Stay safe. Safe. Absolutely. Stay safe out there. Thank you for listening. We will have more Just Cook It Radio next Saturday at 9 a.m. right here on the Just Cook It Radio Network. Thanks for listening to Just Cook It Radio with Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. For more information on today's program, visit the Just Cook It website at justcookit.net. Here you can listen to the podcast or watch Mario and Bill cook today's recipe on Just Cook It TV. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please call 855-590-0590.